Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review, and I'm here today to talk to you about how The Rock is the latest celebrity to become a jackass in the box. So basically, The Rock went on Fox News, of all places, and basically he talked about politics and this and that, and because you know he wants to be president so bad. Claiming that, you know, senators on both sides have talked to him in secret about running for office. And that man does not need to be president because he doesn't know what the world he's doing. He couldn't even successfully take over DC Warner Brothers and everything. We all remember how that light fell in his face. But anyways, the reason why The Rock has become the latest jackass in the box, and I am now completely done with The Rock. See, I've said before... I've always talked about how he's a terrible actor, how he just can't act. And I stand by that. But I was still a fan of him because of wrestling and the nice person people say he is. But I am now 100% done with The Rock. He is now the people's bitch. Why? Because the man says also in that interview how he hates cancel culture. But most importantly, he does not like woke culture. And I'm thinking to myself, does this man look like he's white? I mean, in the picture. <laughs> he's about as light-skinned as he's ever been, so maybe he does think he is. Like, I don't know. <laughs> and everything, you know what I'm saying? But, like, this is a man who has benefited from woke culture so many ways. And so many people in the WWE... Or where they are now because of this man. And when it comes to cancel culture, it's pretty obvious why he doesn't like that. One, so many of his friends have been canceled, both in Hollywood and in wrestling. Especially wrestling now because the WWE is pretty much under investigation when it comes to Vince and all his shenanigans. And other people that The Rock like and stuff like that. People have been canceled from wrestling because of racial comment, sexual assault, sexual harassment, um, just all kind of stuff. And you know, some of his Hollywood buddies have been as well. Also, people tried to cancel The Rock a couple of years ago. Back before Black Adam came out, The Rock had to delete a transphobic um, tweet he wrote years ago. Basically, somebody pissed The Rock off, so he decided to use a transphobic slur against that person. This isn't the first time he's done that. He's done it back in his wrestling days when he used to cut a promo and everything to Michael Cole, calling him the H-word. Basically, a person who has both, like, sex organs and stuff. And the, that's basically who The Rock is. Apparently, because I don't know, like, you know, when that person pissed him off, he used the T word against that man. And yeah, and people got pissed at him, but it was conservatives who got pissed at him. But it was also liberals as well. But it was the conservatives that tried to take him down. And it was even people like Caitlyn Jenner, of all people, a woman who is transgender, but who only decides to be transgender when it suits her. Because she will put her own people down and her own community down and stuff. But yeah, it was so many people trying to take him down because of that. But that's not the only thing. Also, when he tried to go on Joe Rogan's podcast many years ago... And people informed his dumb behind that Joe Rogan is a bigot, is a racist, has called black people the N-word, and said black men brains are basically the equivalent of some prime primate animal. I don't know if it was a monkey, gorilla, an ape, or what, but it was one of those things. So he got all upset because he wanted to share that beer with um, Joe Rogan after Joe Rogan is an anti-vaxxer and has made dumb claims about the vaccine and COVID and stuff. And the Rock, I mean, Joe Rogan was forced to apologize. The Rocks are like, oh, good for you, brother. We gonna share a beer and blah, 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 and stuff like that. But then people informed him that, yo, Joe's a racist and everything. So he didn't do the podcast back then, but he recently did it now. And also, um, I think that's the only thing they tried to cancel him for. So he knows a little thing about that and he doesn't like it. Plus, he is a former wrestler and a celebrity and he looks the way he does. 
maybe that man got a story of his own that he doesn't want to get out. Nobody knows, you know what I'm saying? But certain members of his family does and stuff. So anyways... He said he doesn't like woke cut on culture. Basically, he said it bugs him and this and that. And he doesn't want people telling him how things have to be. And he just wants to be real and blah, 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 blah. Well, here's the thing. This man, like I said, has one, become a self-sustaining man on his own. But he has also benefited from woke culture. See, The Rock used to be a bad boy back in the day. He had a strained relationship with his father. His father's had um his father's black. His mom is Samoan. His mom was actually in the um nation of domination. The real one, not the WWE one, but the actual real one. And they are based on the Black Panthers and stuff. And so like um he was a bad boy growing up. And he used to get in trouble with the law. And it was his coach that told him, look, man. There isn't much opportunities for you here. As big as you are, you need to play football and stuff. So he started playing football until he got hurt. Then realizing, you know, the only thing left for him probably to do is be a wrestler. His dad didn't want him to be one, but he trained him anyways. When The Rock started off as Rocky Mavia, people hated his character. So much that Vince was going to fire him. Legit fire him. He only had seven bucks in his pocket. He went to his car and he reinvented himself. He became The Rock, coming up with all kind of material. He tried it out on Mark Henry. Mark Henry laughed. And then The Rock was born and The Rock became the most electrifying man in sports and entertainment. Until now, his cousin has dethroned him by being a world champion for two, um, two years and stuff. But you know why his cousin became a champion for two years. I mean, because people did not like Roman Reigns at first. And WWE pushed him. Gee, I want to know why. Because he has a famous cousin. <laughs> but anyways. And so The Rock did it all on his own. And this is why his production company is called Seven Bucks. To always remind him of how he almost lost everything. Anyways... While then, you know, he became the, like, you know, an amazing wrestler and an amazing champion. And, like, he uh, was the very first black WWE champion. Well, half. Half black, half Samoan. But the thing is, he was never billed as a black man. I kind of figured he wouldn't be because every time they talked about him, they always talked about how he's half black, half Samoan. And so he was always a racial ambiguous like wrestler. That's how they build him and everything. But he even said that, you know, he helped um, pave the way for race and stuff like that in WWE, which he has. I mean, the second black WWE champion, I believe, was Kofi Kingston, I believe. And then it was Bobby Lashley and Big E. Those three people benefited big time because of Black Lives Matter. That's when Black Lives Matter was a thing a couple of years ago. And that's when the WWE took the belt off the Miz and gave it to Bobby Lashley. But then, you know, Kofi had it at one point and then um, Big E. And... Like, Big E won it from Money in the Bank. And you already know when people win it from Money in the Bank, it's either the WWE doesn't see nothing in them or they do. And, you know, those are really the only black people who ever held the belt in their thing. Those four people. Everybody else have been white and then there's been like two Mexicans and stuff. And that's literally it because WWE is a very prejudiced company who only sees white people as their champions and stuff. And Big E, of course, lost it very quickly because he broke his neck and then Kofi, Vince just didn't see nothing in him because Vince don't like skinny champions and stuff like the whole Christian thing. But like, you know, Bobby Lashley, who should have been champion years ago, finally... Um, the WWE gave him a chance because, you know, back in the day, he was kind of green and didn't know how to wrestle that well. And so, like, but now he does and they saw big money in him. And it's all because of Black Lives Matter. So people like those three I named benefited from, like, you know, not only having a person of color like The Rock at first being champion, but because of the movement that was going on. 
And it's odd that The Rock does not like woke culture because, like, so many of his family members are in wrestling right now. And it's because of their family legacy who's always been in wrestling, but mostly because The Rock is The Rock. I mean, look at his daughter now. His daughter, which, by the way, when people attacked his daughter because The Rock tried to become champion of Roman Reigns and stuff like that and took it away from Cody, they attacked his daughter. That's wrong. If you're going to criticize her wrestling when she can't wrestle, that's fine. If you're going to criticize the fact that she can't cut a promo and she can't do a backstage segment without looking awkward, that is fine. And, but as you can tell, she is still in the WWE and she should be in developmental. She can't wrestle, she can't cut a promo, and she has terrible backstage like skills and everything. But she's now the new GM because they're trying to keep her on as long as they can because The Rock is her dad and The Rock has share in the TKO thing and everything which is a collab between UFC and the WWE. So she is benefiting from that man and everything. And like when it comes to The Rock and his whole Walt culture, if he doesn't like it so much, why in the world does his production company cast so many diverse people? I don't get it. It's his company. He could put a stop to it if he wants to, but he does not. Look at Black Adam. First of all, Black is on um, the rock is not Egyptian, okay? And he played an Egyptian dude. So then you have that of Hawkman, Cyclone, and Adam Smasher, who have all been race bent to this movie. That's not their races in the comic. They're all white in their thing. But yet, a movie that the rock produced and made himself. Those people got casted. If he didn't like Walt culture so much, he could have stepped up to the plate and been like, look, I don't want them cast in the movie. But yet he did. But when the movie bombed, oh no, he had to turn his anger and his criticism somewhere. And apparently he has now turned it to Walt culture. Because you can't blame him for the movie failing, even though it was all of him. Because he just ruined that movie. He didn't know what the world he was doing. He was in the midst of taking over DC Warner Brothers and everything. And what's odd is that The Rock has played white men in the past. That they have got race bent to fit his race and everything. And I'm thinking to myself, oh wait, this is before woke was a thing. But he hates woke culture, remember? So why did he play these white characters? In The Walking Tall, which a lot of people love that movie because, you know, The Rock is in it and stuff like that. And the um, dude who plays Stifler. The movie is based on a real life man. And that real life man is white. And so for the movie, they created a new character around that real life man. And it was The Rock's character. And so they had to fit their race around that. Basically, they race bent that character and everything. It's not named the same man because of probably legal reasons and stuff, but it's that character walking around with a two by four and never use the gun, stuff like that. Taking down bad guys who was a sheriff. And I'm thinking to myself, dude, you can't talk about hating Walt culture because one of your best movies that people love is one where you basically had a white character race bent to your race and everything. Then there was a movie he did that um, where he played a football character. And that football character was a coach by the name of Sean Porter. Sean Porter's white. The Rock is not. Therefore, that character had to be race bent to fit that of The Rock's color and everything in his race. But he was okay with that. Oh, wait. Oh, no. But he hates Walt culture, remember? But he, but he played that character and everything. And I'm thinking to myself... Dude, you literally took a role from a white person. It got race bent to fit your needs. You was okay with it. Oh, but now all of a sudden you don't like Walt culture. Then there is the newest one that has not come out yet. I've talked about this before. His A24 movie. He's supposed to play Mark Kerr. And Mark Kerr is white and Puerto Rican. Does the rock look white and Puerto Rican to you? No. 
but he don't care because he's going to play this role and everything. And he has no business playing this role. Then you have to look at San Andreas. Now, I personally don't know what race he played in San Andreas, but the woman who played his wife and the woman who played his daughter are both Italian. So that makes me think The Rock played an Italian man. And does that Italian man look black and Samoan? No, he does not. And, but The Rock was totally okay with it back then, as long as it made him money. But oh no, wait, the movie didn't do so great. And so now he doesn't hate, now he hates Walt culture and everything. It's funny how whenever his movies don't do well, then all of a sudden he doesn't like Walt culture and everything. And if he doesn't like Walt culture so much, why is he in the Fast and Furious franchise? A movie that is depicted on diversity. And when he did Hobbs and Shaw, oh, wait a minute. Look at all these diverse people who played his family members and stuff. Even his real life cousin was in the movie. Oh, okay. He had to show his roots, his, his family and everything. Remember how proud he was to display, um... Samoan roots in that movie and everything and how it was a big thing and all this other stuff But oh no wait, he hates Walt culture. Oh no wait his movie bombed in everything and I'm like Oh, so now this is why he doesn't like Walt culture But the real thing is is why does he hate Walt culture when so many of his celeb friends and everything? have benefited from it when he sees there is diversity in Hollywood now. And could it be because he's trying to play both sides of the aisle? Because we all know how people on Fox News think and everything. And he wants to be president. And so the thing about The Rock is what makes The Rock one of the crappiest people in the Hollywood or in the world in general is you don't know how he truly feels about anything. We found this out with Black Adam. When The Rock was trying to kiss everybody's butt so this movie would do well, he flip-flopped one arm um, to one side to another. First, he was trying to make the DC fans happy. Then he was trying to make the Snyder fans happy. And then, like, he couldn't make both happy because he had to pick one for his Superman. And so he picked the DC um, version of it instead of the DC EU version of it. And that's what he does. He flip-flops. When something benefits him, he flops to that side. But then when it doesn't, he goes to the other side and everything. And so The Rock is a very fake person. And I've always wondered, because so many people keep talking about he's a great person. He does this, he does that. Like when the people, when the Hollywood actors went on strike, he donated millions of dollars so that they can pay their bills and eat. Like I said before, that was amazing and that was great. But you want to know what he should have done? Him and those other people like Ben Affleck and J-Lo and all them, they should have striked too. Because if they would have, that would have shut Hollywood down for good. And all those networks and studios been like, yo, we can't lose people like The Rock, Ben Affleck and J-Lo and stuff like that. So we have to give the actors what they want. But instead, The Rock decided, hey, I'm just going to give you some money. But no, he should have got on the picket line and strike. That would have sent a message to all those studio people. But he didn't do that because The Rock was thinking about himself and his bank account and everything. And so, like... It's just so funny how The Rock is going to throw half his race under the bus. And it's kind of like he's suffering from smell yourself itis. He got up ahead, he smelt himself, and then he turned himself on his own people. And it's just kind of like, dude. Just go to White Projects if that's how you feel and everything. Because he doesn't like diverse woke culture, which is so funny. Because every time I say, every time something bombs, then all of a sudden he flips. Because there was a TV show that he created for YouTube TV. Remember that YouTube Red thing they had? I forgot the name of the show, but I watched it. The show was abysmal and everything. He created that show. He has a diverse cast in that show. The lead actress is half black, half Asian. And the thing is, that show was terrible. The show had a stupid time travel premise to it. 
you think it's gonna go one way but it just goes in a completely different direction and needless to say it got canceled after one season and no other streaming site wanted to pick it up when youtube red went like the way of the dinosaurs and stuff he had that show what was it little rock or something like that that depicts his child and teenhood that got canceled after just two seasons and everything then he had the show i think ballers i think it was now that lasted for five seasons but nobody has heard of it and stuff but yet you know it got renewed for five seasons because somebody apparently was watching it but of course he was producing it and so like of course it was going to get renewed one way or another but nobody ever talks about it and some people don't even know he was in this show and like i said before he has produced so many of his latest movies because hollywood stopped taking a chance on him because they realize he is a terrible actor and when he produces his own movies with his own studio of course he makes way more money than he should and if he doesn't like walt culture why in the world is he having all these diverse people cast that don't make no sense but he doesn't like it you see he doesn't like it when his movies don't do well if they're doing well oh he's gonna be chuckling and talking about oh yeah diversity is great and everything and blah 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 and stuff like that but when it goes sour he doesn't like it see now he's trying to suck up to all of these anti-woke mob people because he know that you know they don't like diversity and stuff but as long as he can kiss their behind he's hoping to get what he wants and if he doesn't like woke culture so much why in the world like why in the world did he make moana and everything the animated movie that depicts hawaiian culture and he lived in hawaii that's when he was a bad boy and stuff and that's when disney was taking a chance on people who weren't just like white and they wanted diversity in their movies if he doesn't like walt culture so much why in the world is he in that movie if he doesn't like walt culture so much why is he trying to make a live action version of it that nobody asked for that's gonna come out the same time the second animated movie is gonna come come out oh because things went sour with him in dc warner brothers and black adam so now he jumped on over to that of marvel and remember he congratulated um black panther to um the wakanda movie and it's like but no way you don't like walk sorry about that my camera died but yeah he praised the second black panther movie because he tried his best to get with disney and marvel and everything because dc went bad for him and that second black panther movie there was only one white person in it one jewish person and everybody else was black and mexican but oh no way he don't like walk culture remember so why is he praising that movie and everything and it's just seriously if he don't like walk culture so much he is desperately trying to make a live action moana movie and everything and nobody asked for it but he's doing it because he needs a win in hollywood because the last couple of movies he had have bombed or flopped or something this man is so fake in everything like he is literally the epitome of fake he does whatever helps his bank account out because he doesn't want to go back to the way he was growing up i understand that but don't be fake about it and everything be real as he claims he is and everything but the rock surrounds himself around toxic people that is the environment he's been around since he's been young since he's been in wrestling and since he's been in hollywood and stuff and this is who the rock really is he has smelt himself and like i said before when race bending the character is beneficial to him he's totally okay with stuff and you know when it comes to hawaiian people with the moana thing it's like you know they're, they're a combination of so many different things they're japanese um what is it japanese filipino they're like some of them are hispanic and everything some are pacific islander and everything some are um samoan yes um how many i don't know and stuff like that and so like what i said before when it benefits him he loves it and everything and the thing is is that what does he want does he want to really go back to that of like the 19 like 40s 
all the way to like the 1990s and early 2000s when everything is predominantly white on television and then they're just like people of color are stereotypes is that really what he wants like thank god we have diversity in hollywood now the only problem is that diverse stuff is not written very well and it doesn't do well at the box office on TV because it's not written, directed, or acted well. Once they get a handle on that, then things will go more smoothly. And like I said before, when a predominantly white project tanks at the box office or get canceled on TV, you don't hear nobody complain about that. And when I mean nobody, I mean the anti-woke mob people. They won't complain when a predominantly white movie bombs. Oh no, it's not because the movie's all white. But once there's diversity in the movie and it bombs, oh, they gotta say, oh, it's because of woke and everything. But see, now he is kissing up to them. He is a sellout, plain and simple as that. And you know what? He's probably always been a sellout, and but he has benefited from black people and everything, especially in wrestling when he was part of that nation of domination fraction and everything. He was loving black folks then and everything, but now look at the man and like now look at him like he turns his back on people of color now. He is transphobic. He's probably homophobic as well and everything, and. Because, yeah, I told you before, he played a gay man in one of his first movie roles and stuff. And, like, it was that movie, <sighs> Be Cool, I think it was called, with John Travolta and stuff. Um, What was it? It had um Christine Milian in there. It had John Travolta. I think it was called Be Cool or something like that, where he played a gay man and stuff. And I'm just like, well, why couldn't they cast a real gay man for that? And why did he have to take a gay man's role and everything? Or maybe, just maybe, since he doesn't like woke culture and he wants to see predominantly white people on screen, maybe that's why he was a wrestler. Maybe he just liked getting in the wrestling ring with all those half-naked, muscular white men. Nobody knows, you know what I'm saying? Alrighty, well, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.